Hello and welcome to Haircut and the Beard. My name is Vader, aka Haircut, and I'm joined by my co-host, Rob the Beard Brown. What's going on? Hey man, how you doing? Really good. What have you been up to this week? Uh, trying to learn how to uh, make video games, which is really fun yet challenging. Unreal 4. Unreal Engine, yes. Going to yeah. be making our apartment. I am going to be making our apartment. <laughs> all, all of the uh, the mess and the washing and all that kind of stuff included, but why not, you know? <laughs> yeah. Beard watch this week. Not much movement? No, not much movement in the beard watch. <laughs> Maintaining. Maintaining, beautiful. Yep. <laughs> haven't grown it, haven't shaved it. You're just keeping it the way it is. You're happy where, where it's at. But that's it. I've reached, uh, I've reached like the beard plateau. You know, it's not going to get any beard better. Beard plateau. That's a, good, that's a good one. When you reach the epitome of man beard, you that's stay it. the same. You don't need more. That's it. Just leave it as it is. You know? I'd like to welcome to the program a uh, special guest. This is her 13th time on the show. It's episode 15. The girl. Hey. Hey. <laughs> it's good to see some beard consistency in the room. <laughs> Have you got a pun for uh, 15? Of course not. I don't do puns. Oh. Oh. I'm not going to say I'm disappointed, but I'm a little bit disappointed. <laughs> it gets hard once it gets into the teens. Yeah. What know. rhymes with 15? It's a weird... Uh, 14? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. 15. It's the dream. That's no, a bad rhyme. If this is your first time listening to the show, we like to talk about movies, TV shows, and sometimes, sometimes, a little bit of... <laughs> Video games. Stay tuned this episode because we are doing Rob. Uh, this week we're going to be doing Inside Out, the new Pixar film. Cool for adults and kids. Yeah, wait for kids and adults. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this one. You can hit us up on Twitter at haircutbeard is our handle. You can also shoot us an email haircutandthebeard at gmail dot com or just uh, go to our website haircutandthebeard.com. Also, give us a re- review on iTunes. Test out that five star button. See if it works for us. It does help us get our name out there. Let's jump in and do some news. So the first bit of news is going to be a Flight of the Concords movie. Wow. Oh, really? Yeah. Brett McKenzie and Jermaine Clement are uh, reportedly working on the script. God, I hope it's good. I love those guys. So good. So funny. They're Apparently great. they're going to be doing like a play slash musical um, beforehand to a tour and then they're going to come out with the movie. Oh, unreal. Mm, is that like promo sort of pre-release? Uh, reminding I've, everyone I've who they are? it's just a different project. Maybe. Oh, okay. They keep preamble. busy. Yeah. They have a really unique style of comedy, but it just works for me. I just, yeah. I love yeah. everything those guys do. It's fucking great. Zorro is also getting a reboot. <laughs> uh, promises apparently to be post apocalyptic and gritty. Post apocalyptic Zorro? Yeah. That's like the out of things that need a gritty reboot, that is not one of them. No. You know, like that seems really a really strange mixture. From Z to Z, Zach Galifianakis is going to be playing the Joker. In what? in uh, the Lego movie, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and there it is. I actually read that it, like the exact same way that you just said it. I'm like, he's playing the Joker. In what what monstrosity is this? <laughs> what happened to Jared Leto? <laughs> yeah. And then I heard that it was in a Lego movie. I'm like, okay, I can see that. Yeah, that, yeah. that works. Yeah, for that's me. a better fit. Yeah, he's got a, a funny voice for it. Beetlejuice two is being made. Uh, yeah. Did you like the first one? I love the first one. Yeah. I think it's Tim Burton at it, like at his best. Like that's for me the pinnacle. That and Batman, the the old Batman. Like uh, Tim Burton while he was top, you know, top notch, top, top notch Burton in yeah. his prime, <laughs> prime Burtons, <laughs> yeah. prime Burtons, <laughs> prime Burts. <laughs> and um, we're of course reviewing Inside Out this week, but another kids' film, Finding Nemo, has found a sequel, Finding Dory. Really? Oh. Yeah. Apparently Dory gets lost in this one. They had like a image. <laughs> I'm surprised that- Dory didn't get lost in the first yeah, one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dory was ador- Dory was adorable. Adorable. Uh, adorable, yeah. Brilliant. Love those characters. <laughs> yeah, there was like an image release. It was like the first official image. It was like an octopus attacking her or something. Oh, like really? That. Yeah. Oh. I think there's like, a, I don't know if this is the case, but I feel like there's an A and a B team at Pixar. Yeah. And I feel like the B team does all the sequels and the A team does like their core stuff because there's a very big drastic difference in quality between like Monsters, Inc. and Monsters, Inc. goes to college or whatever the fuck that movie was called, yeah. you know. But it's do you have better another, that you've forgotten. Aside from that example, do you have another one? Yeah, Cars, Cars 2. Cars 2 was a lot worse. I haven't seen it. Yeah, either. it was like a sort of spy thriller, you know, like it was really yeah. strange. And then you've got uh, Toy Story. Uh, I think the core team does the, like does those. I mean, in, in my sort of world where I believe that there is a core and a non-core <laughs> team, but um, there's been a few sequels that were pretty poor. And you've got the yeah. Planes movie as well, which is, I don't know, they seem... It's a whole different ball game. Yeah. It's yeah. like Team A going, you know what, we could do a better sequel. Let's just go a different direction with the planes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> very strange, very strange, but yeah. 
That's I, it for movie news. Do you have anything for a uh, video game? Yeah, I've got a couple of things. One thing I just wanted to add into uh, normal news. Uh, so Tom Hardy, who I'm a huge fan of, uh, is producing and possibly starring in an adaptation of 100 Bullets, which is a, uh, a graphic novel. Oh, um, that's a classic. Yeah, absolutely phenomenal. And they've been talking about making either a TV show or a movie for a very, very long time. And apparently Tom Hardy's a huge fan and he's really pushing to get this done. Mm, like um, a passion project. Yeah, yeah. And the, the second I saw this and I'm like, Tom Hardy attached, like, uh, oh my God, my brain just <laughs> almost exploded. But 100 Bullets is a really cool concept where a guy will, uh, let's say someone's been wronged in their life in some way, like, you know, their family member might have been killed or something like that. Someone will approach them and say, I have evidence, uh, you know, proof that this is the person that, that wronged you in this, this epic way. Here's a hundred bullets and a gun and you're guaranteed untraceable. If you just walk up to, the, to them in the middle of the street and blow them away in front of a cop shop, uh, you will get away with it 100% and yeah. then just see what happens. Yeah. Why 100 bullets? Yeah, why do you need that many? Because there's a hundred books in the the comic series, and it just oh, worked. Cool. But uh, I, I I don't know. But it's just part of a part of a law, and there's it, it's a really really cool, interesting concept, and it becomes really convoluted the story and everything like that. But it's just phenomenal, and and the idea that they're uh, you know someone as big as Tom Hardy is behind this, I, I've got a lot of hope in it. I think it'll be really mm. cool. Um, cool. The longer I move away, like the further the further in time I get away from having seen Mad Max, the less of a fan I am of Tom Hardy. Really? Like, I'm, he's not bad, but I'm just like, I'm not a raving I don't fan think like he was are. ideal for that movie, though. Yeah. I, I agree with that. What I did don't... he do in that movie? You know what I mean? He was like, like just held a straight face and was yeah. a tough guy. I think I remember actually saying in the, the review we did of Mad Max that it wasn't so much, like, he. I don't think he was the, the best pick for that. You know, he mm. didn't yeah. have the, the same sort of charisma that, that Mel Gibson has, which... It's a bit of a shame, but that yeah. said, I still love him as an actor, but just I don't think he was right in that. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. think he was the protagonist either in that one. True. Even though no. it was called Mad Max, I don't think he was driving the story. No, no he wasn't. You're right. I agree with that. He was just there to tie the law in together and, yeah. and look, look handsome and do his, <laughs> do his Tom Hardy thing. In video game news, I've just got a couple of, couple of little ones. Uh, we were a big fan on, on the podcast of, of Kung Fury. Uh, I think we'd all agree with that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. There's a Kung Fury video game. Uh, yes. called Kung Fury Street Rage and it's already out there ready to go you can wow. download it right now um, a, a funny thing it said uh, in the, the sort of tagline not enough zombies were hurt in the making of this game <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was kind of clever but huge fan it, it looks like a really old sort of Streets of Rage sort of throwback you know from like the 90s uh, but it just looks awesome really so really it's fun sort of game. stylistically like the the short movie. Yeah, like it just sort of over the top stupid, kill a gazillion zom- uh, and Nazis and... Lots of karate moves. I'm guessing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I haven't actually played it yet, but I'm, I'm definitely down for, for giving it a, a crack. Cool. Also, uh, Haircut, you played a lot of Destiny. We, we played a lot of Destiny when it was too out. much. Too much Destiny. A lot of <laughs> Destiny. Uh, Dinklebot. Uh, remember the whole Dinklebot thing? Peter Dinklage was obviously the Yeah, because he voice. was, of course, the he played the little bot that like basically guided you through and narrated the whole game. Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't that great. No. Like, it, it was a bit of a joke kind of on the forums and it stuff. It was. People tore him to shreds. Like, he copped a lot of flack over that. I still think him being Dinkle a good flack. actor. Sorry? Dinkle flag. <laughs> Dinkle flag. <laughs> <laughs> I still think a lot of it was the direction, not so much him, because he can act. You know, I think he just got some poor direction. They're replacing him entirely, top to bottom. They're ripping him out of the game. Wiped out. <laughs> Just uh, totally ripped out. Like and it he's... never happened. I- exactly. So, <laughs> it's. Uh, I don't think this has ever been done before. Like, there's been some pretty big cases of people being replaced in movies... But I don't think in a video game ever anyone has just been totally ripped out from scratch after yeah, it's, it's been out for a while. Be the equivalent of like going back and going to, I don't know, the Mad, Mad Max, the original, and going, you know what, we're just going to superimpose Tom Hardy's <laughs> face <laughs> on Mel Gibson the whole way through. <laughs> I just, when this came up, I looked up some interesting like recasting um, stories and there was yeah. a couple of good ones. I, I wasn't aware of this, but in Eric Stoltz was actually the original protagonist for Back to the Future and he actually shot three months worth of footage and you can look it up right now and find footage of him in in that that um, show okay Google who is Eric Stoltz <laughs> <laughs> yeah good point Stoltz is an American actor director and producer 
I think that that's pushed yeah. it a bit far. He's okay. been in like three big things. Like he's he's not really anywhere near as so well was, known. But so he was going to be um, doing Michael, Michael J. Fox's Fox. part. Yeah, okay. yeah. And they shot three months, and then the why did they can him? I think Spielberg actually came out and said, "Look, I just don't think like you're not giving the same sort of fun energy that we want for this." Oh, you'd be devs. I know, I know. And if you look at the footage, he is very serious and and you know like the uh, hey doc. <laughs> yeah, it's like <laughs> hey doc. Hey, We've got to go back to the future. We've got to go back, back to the future. <laughs> <laughs> and and this one I thought was kind of funny. Uh, Indiana Jones was initially going to be Tom Selleck. And there's actually oh, screen wow. tests out there of Tom <laughs> Selleck doing Indiana Jones. Uh, but it, it, it's kind of funny, uh, just the thought of, of Tom Selleck in this role. But Yeah, it would have changed everything, mm. Indiana Jones-wise. Like, it's hard to think that it, it would have been any good, just knowing the films now, but... Maybe it was going to be better, you know? Like, we, we don't know. It could have been, like, it even been, better. It could have been, like, his breakout role where he was, you know, went from, like, a good quality B-movie actor to, like, a top quality A-lister yeah. and just, like, changed his career. Yeah, yeah. I but the- I doubt it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, one last little thing. I just wanted this in the podcast because I think it's kind of hilarious, but it's not really related to video games, movies, or anything like that. There's uh, Have you guys heard of Hitchbot? I've heard of Dinklebot. No, okay. What, was that like five minutes ago where we talked about yeah. it? <laughs> What's a Hitchbot? So basically Hitchbot is this robot where they, they basically program this robot to hitchhike. So it's it's trying to get, I think it was from Canada through the US to Mexico or something like that. Like I had this really long route and everything had been going fine. People are actually picking this thing up, putting it in their car, <laughs> taking it as far as they possibly can and then just putting it on the side of the road. Is right. it like just a robot with its thumb up? Pretty much, yeah, yeah. Like, you have a Google it. Have a quick look at the photo. It's kind of adorable. But it got to the US border. Finally, made it to the US border. This big deal. It had been going fine for ages. No one had trolled it. No one had done anything. Made it to the US. Someone destroyed it. Oh. It oh, was man. there for fuck all time until someone just destroyed the shit out of it. Like, was it customs when it when it came through the border or? I, I don't know how it works with the borders yeah, and all that kind of stuff. I wonder if they're worried about, like, terror threats or if they terror. think... No, 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 it wasn't destroyed by, like, Border Patrol or anything some... like that. It was just some dudes destroyed the bot. Like, <laughs> just totally fucked up. Like, That's funny. It makes it all through Canada. They're like, oh, yes, <laughs> eh, we'll, we'll get your robot through the, our country and all these. It gets the US and like, ah, robot, kill it, and just fucked it up. <laughs> yeah. Like, I thought that was kind Someone of hilarious. Someone in Silicon Valley probably just took it for parts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll strip all the copper out of it and sell it. <laughs> But that, that's pretty much it for video game and robot and dinklebot news. So the uh, the movie we're doing this week is uh, Inside Out, written and directed by Pete Pete Doctor and Ronaldo Del Carmen. You say Doctor very American. Doctor. Pete Doctor. Of course, starring Amy Poehler, Bill Hader, among you know a variety of others. Yeah, Mimic. it's a big cast. Mimic. Yeah, big cast. So um, this, of course, animated the latest from Pixar. Who are absolutely smashing the box office this year, by the way. Yeah. And, smashing um, the box. <laughs> smashing the dirty box. <laughs> what are your thoughts on this, just right off the bat? I fucking loved it. Just you top loved to bottom, movie. loved it. Absolutely loved it. Yeah. yeah. Passionately, aggressively loved it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that sounds a bit rapey. <laughs> <laughs> you the, loved um, it inside and out. Oh, there you go. Ew. Yeah, no, I thought it was great. Absolutely loved it. I thought it was clever. They took like, if you were to try to describe this film, it's a really convoluted concept. Different emotions ruling someone's body from this little control room and yeah. all this kind of stuff. Like it's, it'd be a hard pitch to give like, imagine the elevator pitch for this. You know, <laughs> like it'd be really hard. So you know how we've had Toy Story? <laughs> uh, you know how we've had B-Movie? <laughs> let's, uh, let's do uh, Feelings. <laughs> It'd be a hard pitch, I, I think, yeah. but uh, I think they, they really managed to explain it in a way that was like easy to follow, it was coherent, it was concise, and it, it was just brilliant, yeah. Yeah. I do think if you sat and thought about it for a while, though, you'd start to see a lot of weak points, just in the okay. whole design of the mind and how it worked. Like, I don't know, it seemed really expansive, but then really simplistic at the same time. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. I mean, if you're going to convey how the brain works to oh, a yeah, bunch of kids, like, that's... Yeah. They did it really well. If the but, brain yeah. actually worked like that, there would be many other things that wouldn't 
wouldn't have worked in that movie. You know, it's great. Like, it was a fantastic movie. I, yeah. I really enjoyed it as well. So, of course, let's just do a quick plot summary. Yeah. So, that, uh, basically, you follow five feelings that are in a little girl's head. Yeah. Uh, a little girl's called Riley, and inside her head, you've got joy, sadness, fear, Grossness. anger, and... Disgust. 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 Yeah, that's right. And all these <laughs> feelings kind of are a different character at a control panel in this little girl's head. Mm. And you kind of see how as these characters all jump on the control panel is that's that's the emotion that the little girl expresses that Riley experiences and, yeah exactly and and every day that this Riley is awake all these memories are created and those memories are a certain color depending on the the, emotion. the main emotion attached to it so joy is like yellowy sadness is kind of a bluish color and each time that a memory is created, it appears as one of these colors. And they look mm. like little snow globes. Yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, of course, where the story starts is that sadness touches one of these memories and it turns sad. And then mm. you start to realize that if sadness starts to touch previous memories, it could kind of change the personality of Riley altogether. Yeah. And make her a sad human. <laughs> human yeah and it's a, it's an interesting thought that like what what can be like a, a super happy happy memory can then be tainted by sadness mm, if retrospectively if, yeah yeah you know like if it's like a, a memory with a really good friend or something like that and then you moved away from that good friend that that then becomes a sad memory and it's yeah i think it's kind of like the the base story is that the girl's sort of moving away and because she's moving away from all her friends and family and uh, i mean mainly her friends obviously she's going with her family but uh, when she's reminiscing about her friends and all that kind of stuff like sadness is sort of tainting tainting all those memories you know yeah uh, and it, i mean it's a really low stakes film in the grand scheme of things it's just about a little girl's happiness mm. you know That's if you it. think but the uh, it really did have a big payoff in the sense that i, I was really engrossed and really yeah. like oh my god no don't don't <laughs> let this happen and don't let that happen and yeah it's really engaging yeah like you really you care more i think about the emotions as characters than the girl herself does yeah. that make sense yeah, yeah. without yeah. a doubt yeah. without a doubt joy i thought was was spectacular I amy thought, poehler yeah amy poehler was, she was perfect for that a hundred percent and phyllis as sadness from the <laughs> office I yeah. Thought, yeah. I was amazed that like she was really good in this. I just I thought that after the office she would just disappear off the face of the planet. Like, it was really you... good to see her getting another big role. Yeah. Well, not yeah. that the initial one was a big role, but yeah, it was a very long role. Mm. <laughs> Do you remember the bit where um it kind of zooms out into the other characters, the mum and the dad? Oh, that was my feelings. favorite. I actually have that next on my yeah. list of things to talk about <laughs> too. Do you remember what Riley's father daydreams about? Like what sport? Uh, I thought it was football, but I could be wrong. Was it hockey or soccer? I th- I thought football. I thought but it was soccer. I thought it was soccer as well. And apparently, the the daydreams about either soccer or football depend on the country of release. Oh, really? So we we got the soccer version. Oh no shit! And elsewhere, obviously, got the hockey version. That's but really the little kid still plays hockey. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was really cool that uh, the 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 dad brain where he's just like all of the characters in his head are just watching football while uh, yeah. you know everyone else is talking. <laughs> And the second that like someone uh, interacts with him, he's like, "Oh no, shit! I've got to remember what, what, what's going on." And oh god, what does she want? I've had that leave? moment so <laughs> many times. The, car- the garbage out. I thought the um, jumping into other people's brains uh, and seeing their little world was amazing. There was a bit where they jumped into uh, Riley talks to a, a little boy who's obviously like you know oh, going yeah. through puberty, and <laughs> and it's like just alarm bells going off. Girl, and, oh, girl, girl, girl. girl. <laughs> That made that really talked to me. Like I remember going through puberty and like talking to a girl. You're like, oh my god! Like your brain's just on fire <laughs> yeah. and going crazy. And, and I think they really had a good way of sort of portraying real world emotions yeah. with with the characters and the, the sort of like setup that they had. Like it was yeah. really clever. That's true. Yeah, it's actually. I know you said it was quite simply done, but it's really. It is really complex, actually, the whole story. Like, it I realized really is, yeah. when we, you were trying to summarize the plot, there's, like, so much going on. Yeah. Because there's a lot that we haven't really touched on with the whole, like, the, the different worlds uh, within her brain, like, mm. you know, yeah. being destroyed and... Uh, These components that make up her personality, like Hockey Island, Friendship Island. Yeah. Like, it was just, Yeah, it was really clever. And, it, like, the, the whole concept of the islands is something, like, I think we everyone has, like, these sort of core things that sort of make up your personality and... And you're being like, you know, it, it could be that you're, yeah. uh, you know, you're the soccer guy or you're the, you know, the guy that's always talking about fucking movies or, you know, yeah. that kind of stuff. Like, <laughs> everyone's got that, that uh, you know, those things that make them up as a human. And yeah. 
I've, I think a lot of, I've heard a lot of reports that different uh, psychologists and, and professors and all this kind of stuff are using this film to deal with, uh, you know, to, to show people different ways of dealing with emotion mm. and all that kind of stuff. It's a good tool for teaching people about emotional intelligence. And yeah. Like how you can get some distance from your emotions if you think about where they're originating. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, Pete, Pete Doctor, the uh, director of this, I, I respect him because he actually um, he picked up on something that I always notice about mm. trailers and how they give everything away. You yeah. go and watch the trailer and basically you know the whole movie straight away. It drives me nuts. Yeah. So mm. what he did is he actually intentionally left out Bing Bong of the whole out of the whole trailer yeah. sequence yeah. so that when you go and see the movie that's a complete surprise and it was for me because he was yeah. a core character like he that's was it. really yeah. important to that story yeah. Bing Bong being uh, Riley's imaginary friend yeah uh, and so he, we've just ruined it yeah if you haven't <laughs> yeah. seen it yet yeah. but go and see it it's great he was uh, Bing Bong was amazing the, the Bing Bong song and all that kind of stuff like the, the the whole concept that because like he's just a vague sort of distant memory he's just sort of wandering around aimlessly yeah. Yeah. through her memory banks and you know it was it was very clever so he's done he's as you were saying before about the A and the B team he Pete Doctor's like he's the director of the A team oh yeah he is the A team he yeah. did <laughs> Up he did Monsters Inc yeah original one yeah, yeah yeah no he's um he's really good like he he Wally as well he knows how to pull my emotional heartstrings like he's uh. This film almost made me, like, cry twice. Uh, like, you there said was... you already did cry. I never said that. No. <laughs> I've got a beard. Uh, I don't cry. Uh, <laughs> there was... years in his beard. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, there was definitely a couple of moments in this where I got, like, super emotional. It was yeah. it really pulled on my old heartstrings. Yeah. Yeah, I think it makes you think about your own childhood as well and yeah. what memories you've been neglecting for a long time. Yeah. Like, it made yeah. me want to sit down and think about what my core memories would be. Yeah. 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 Good one. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I did. Yeah. I've talked to a few people that have seen this that that sort of uh, you know have dealt with you know pretty severe sort of emotional trauma and things like that. Not trauma, but people that have dealt with depression and things like that. And hard they, times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they all sort of agreed across the board that this film really helped you know put that that sort of uh, sadness in in not put it in perspective, but help help it help make it a bit more understandable. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause sort of the underlying message of the film was that you need to have sadness to appreciate joy. Like yeah. sadness serves a purpose and you can't That's pretend it. that you're happy all the time. Yeah. You actually do need to have those low times to signal to people that you need a hand or, you know, to take a break from whatever's happening and yeah. yeah. Recoup. Because it was very much like Joy believed that she should have been in control. All the time. As much as humanly possible. Yeah. and As much know. as emotionally possible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it was, uh, I really liked the general message, you know, like it, it really did. It really spoke to me. It just, I, I just loved this film. I really did. It very quickly became my my favorite Pixar film. Like, uh, yeah, well, And I, I love like... All of the the eighteen Pixar films, uh, like huge fan, but you're not going to let that go, are you? I, I'm not, it's a thing now. <laughs> it's a thing. Um, I I, I got to say as well, uh, Lewis Black as Anger, he's he's one of my favorite comedians, and I just loved it every time yeah. he was flying off the handle. Like I just thought it was great, and and the 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 anger in the dad's brain when he just flew off the handle and started like going nuts, like don't make me press the button, don't make me do it. Like I loved that <laughs> bit, loved it. It was so good. Hey, uh, one thing, the the imaginary Canadian boyfriend. Oh, he was great. Yeah. <laughs> I would die for great. Riley. I would die. For- <laughs> you know, there's one bit where he says that and uh, Joy walks past him and goes, okay, haircut. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I was like, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> I made it. Yeah, that was, uh, I liked him. It was funny. I loved the whole gum commercial thing as yes. well. The, the gum it's theme song. It's so true though. It really it's like, is. why are you doing this to me brain when random <laughs> theme songs like. Yeah. And you just get it stuck there for days. It yeah. Was, yeah. It was, was very clever. clever. There was a lot of good humor in it. Just, yeah. Yeah. I like the abstract thought bit where they started like breaking down. Yeah. The yeah. animation was so funny. Mm. And the idea of what, I can't remember what they called it, uh, but when your memories are just lost and gone forever, they just go to this big pit, you know, like, yeah. this, like a clean the dump? up. Crew. Yeah, the, the memory dump. Yeah. yeah. Memory dump, yeah. yeah. And I love the little sorters of the memories. Yeah. Like, does she really need every, like, whatever pony name? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then they're like, into the dump, just sucked them all away. Yeah. 
Hey, I'm doing but my job. It, it really, it was kind of cool just to, because the brain's such a complex thing. It was really good to just say, oh, yeah, so that's how my brain works. Like, Even know, though it's just a kid's movie. Yeah. It's like yeah. you want to believe that that's how it exactly. all works. Exactly. I've just chosen to believe that I've got a group of people up living in my head, you know, doing stuff. And yeah. yeah. Do they all have beards, you reckon? Oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was surprised that Disgust was like a character. Yeah. I think they was just looking for an excuse to have like Mindy in there, like yeah. <laughs> doing her thing. One more thing. When they're on the train of thought and she knocks the boxes of facts and opinions and she's trying to stack them back in, she's like, oh, they just look so similar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that was really yeah, clever. It's so there clever. was a lot of really good, like, little lines. So yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, that's so true. But if I was a little kid, that would have gone way over my head. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's definitely, this film is ideal, I think, for anyone that has a daughter around that age to watch with the, the like, the, the, the parents and the daughter watch it together. I yeah. just think, yeah. Because there's a lot of messages for, as a kid, you know, if your dad's like, um, it sort of ignores you, you know, like for a, for the dad, that's like, look, I just don't really have time at the moment, but I've got to go do important dad stuff. But for the kid, that's like, why isn't dad giving me attention? Yeah. You know, yeah. mm. and you remember that kind of stuff, you know, and I thought it was really clever how it sort of tied that together. Yeah, but- you, rem- you remember it and then like, Later in life, you grow a beard to make up for it. <laughs> yeah. Why didn't Dad love me? And you replace Family Island with Beard Island. <laughs> That's true, yeah. Yeah, I'm just Brilliant. trying to think what the identity islands would be for you, and Beard would definitely be one of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Haircut would be one of yours. Awesome pass. Oh, Bing Bong died. He didn't yeah. die. Oh, he, he faded. Did. He faded away into, into death. Just, I just <laughs> love when death. she's sitting in that cart, like singing the Bing Bong song. Yeah. Bing bong, bing bong. Yeah, I can't remember the song. <laughs> yeah, I just remember like, bing bong, bing bong. But yeah. I got real sad when bing bong died. That was... He yeah. sa- he sacrificed himself. Yeah. When he jumped off the back and she's like flying up and she's like, bing bong, we did it. And then he's like, not I there. knew he was going to do it though. Yeah. He's like, I've got a feeling this time. I'm yeah. like, no, bing bong, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the um the dark night of the soul in, in Blake Snyder's Save the Cat um, recipe of movies. Yeah. There's like a moment uh, in Act 2 towards the end called Dark Knight of the Soul and usually a character there's what's called a whiff of death yeah right when it turns when the when the movie start the plot points start to turn around and either a character dies or there's a whiff of death like yeah. a loss of some sort yeah a loss of some sort or it's yeah. alluded to that's yeah. interesting so that means that was right at the start of act 3 mm. yeah so I just wanted to give a, a, a shout out to movie beatdown awesome podcast that I've been listening to where basically they they take Blake Snyder's Save the Cat movie recipe and they apply it to a bunch of films and each episode there's a film and they kind of walk through it and I'd love to be on that show so if you guys are listening to this <laughs> hit me up we'll organise a guest spot so yeah shout out to Movie Beatdown so for all uh, how many slices of broccoli pizza out of 10? Uh, just quickly there actually is a, a place in San Francisco that does broccoli pizza I found out oh, uh, so that's like a legit thing um, I would I'd give this like as close to a 9 without actually giving it a 9 as I possibly could like 8.99 8.999 repeating <laughs> like so you'd like you'd Take nine slices, but you pick the broccoli off the ninth <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah, okay. exactly, exactly. <laughs> I just loved it. Absolutely loved it. What about you, girl? Yeah, it was a really good movie. I feel like I kind of talked it down a bit. Sometimes, you know, if you think about it, you get a little bit analytical. And yeah. then, but no, I really did love it. It was really enjoyable. Made me emotional. It was funny. Yeah. It was, yeah, just great movie. It's so good to see something original, you oh, know? So original too. Yeah. yeah so different. Yeah. Something new. It was awesome. I'll give it yeah, eight point five broccoli pizzas Beautiful. slices. <laughs> I really enjoyed it as well. I'm gonna give it an eight. Solid nice. eight? Yep, solid eight. Done. Definitely. So Beard, I haven't seen Fantastic Four. It's gotten really awful reviews. I don't want to yeah. waste my time doing it. <laughs> However, we've had a request from Future Horse Podcast. He's the guy behind the Adam Sandcast and Cynical Cartoons Fantastic yeah, Podcast fan. about Rick and Morty. But he requested what did you think of the um, Fantastic I, Four? Firstly, I just want to say thanks, uh, Future Horse. Like that, uh, that's a really nice thing to do to someone. Force them to watch this fucking horrible <laughs> film. Like, <laughs> I just feel like he did that because he doesn't like us very much, you know. <laughs> and I, I was the one stuck with the uh, the assignment to watch this dreck, absolute turd of a film. <laughs> yeah, I just want to look. Firstly, I think it's only fair. I just want to talk about the stuff this film got right. Okay. So now that that's done, let's talk about what it did wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so look, I mean, they took they took what what should be a really joyful, fun, upbeat action hero like you know uh, kind of story, and they've they've just made it into this dark, depressing yeah. montage of people building a machine. 
Yeah. Literally, I'd say 60% of the film is, let's show montages of scientists building stuff. Yeah. Uh, uh, I just I don't even know what to say. <laughs> that was a double. Uh. Uh, yeah, it was it was horrible. It was boring. It was dull. It was it was lifeless. It's a gritty re- reboot of something that should never be gritty. You know, it yeah. should be fun and upbeat. There's there was a really cool. I just I, I have to get this out there. There was a really cool review from uh, Peter Travers of the Rolling Stone. And this is just a little excerpt from it. The latest reboot of Fantastic Four, the cinematic equivalent of malware, I love that line. Oh, that's great. <laughs> is, is worse than worthless. It not only scrapes the bottom of the Marvel movie barrel, it knocks out the floor and sucks audiences into the black hole of soul-crushing, coma-inducing dullness. <laughs> he just honestly articulated exactly my thoughts about it. It was Perfect. just, it was horrible. I think there was a situation where they they had to make another. Um, film before they lost the rights or something to renew oh, okay. their sort of contract so or quick something. Cash cow. Yeah, uh, the, the film. The film would have made money, I think. Yeah, yeah. Despite uh, the, its awfulness. Apparently, one of the one of the guys that was uh, uh, Josh Trank, who was initially the, I think he was the initial writer of it. He actually tweeted just as the first reviews came out. Uh, they they obviously didn't use his script. A year ago, I had a fantastic version of this, and it would have been it would have received great reviews. The uh, they forced him to take down that tweet, but apparently that tweet cost cost the studio between five and ten million dollars. They're claiming, oh. so I think they're I think they're a bit pissed off at him for doing that. But I think any other version of this would have been better. Any other version, like it was just yeah. so horrible. My my biggest complaint the 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 one thing you're looking forward to, which is all of them working together to kill someone or do something like real badass. Three minutes of the film, <laughs> literally three minutes. Yeah. That's it. That's all I got. It was just a turd. I'd give Piece it like of shit. a two out of ten, if that. If that. Sorry for the disappointment. If anyone enjoyed it, let us know what you think. <laughs> at Haircut Beard is our Twiddle handle. Twiddle. 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 <laughs> um, Hit us up on Twiddle. So we've got a uh, we've got a new game. Rob, you want to explain the rules? Yeah. So basically, I've got a list of five films, and I've got three groups of actors. Okay. Basically, you need to take one of these films with one of those groups of actors and pitch a sequel to one of those films. Okay, I think I get it. So basically, you've got a list of five, a list of five different possible films. Yeah. And three actors. I choose one of the films and one of the groups of actors. A- and, and you guys pitch. pitch. Yeah. Okay. A pitch, pitch a story based on it. So the movies that I've got, all of these are sequel lists. So do I go first? You guys can work oh, as a team if you want. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Team up. Team up. So you've got a sequel to either E.T., Fight Club, Forrest Gump, Titanic, or The Breakfast Club. Ooh, and the groups one. of actors are Jennifer Lawrence and Christopher Walken, <laughs> Bradley Cooper and Ian McKellen, oh. Tina Fey and Will Smith. <laughs> and Will Smith will be playing whoever you want them to, as long as it's Will Smith. Yeah, of course. <laughs> What do you like the sound of? I mean, a lot of those are classics that you don't want to touch because yeah. what more can you do with a sequel? Let's just say your studio producers, you own the rights and you just you just we want like, a cash cow. You want money. You don't care about if it's a good film or not. You E.T., Fight Club. Uh, Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump. Titanic <laughs> or Breakfast Club. There was actually going to be a, a sequel to, uh, to Forrest Gump. Oh, it can't really? be Forrest Gump or it can't be Titanic. It can't be because the story's over. It's over. E. I reckon I could pitch it. I, I reckon not. I could do a Forrest Gump sequel. I think Fight Club <laughs> or Breakfast Club. One really? of the clubs. You want to do a club. I think we could do E.T. and like revisit both of those characters. E.T. Finally Home. Yeah. That's the name of it. Yeah. Ooh. And so he gets home and he arrives at his home planet. <laughs> And Will Smith's there with his dog. <laughs> it's like a crossover between E.T. and Men in Black. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. So, Will Smith and who? Uh, Tina Fey. Tina Where Tina are you going to work Tina Fey into that? She can be the voice of E.T. <laughs> She's versatile, right? <laughs> I can actually see that. I can actually see that. <laughs> so, when E.T. arrives uh, to his home planet, um, he discovers that he's being hunted by an international intergalactic uh, alien hunter, Will Smith. Because he knows too much about yeah. Earth. Yeah, true. Will E.T. be able to protect him and his family from destruction by Will Smith and his partner, Tommy Lee Jones? <laughs> <laughs> That's actually quite good. That's actually Brilliant. quite good. And Tina Fey doing the voice of E.T. <laughs> yeah. I think we could do something better with Starring her. Tina Fey. She could be... I could actually see her being... 
like you know how they've always got like a kooky sort of the person that runs the someone in admin black place. Yeah, oh, she, I was she could thinking... also be the partner. Yeah, True. she could. I could see her wearing black. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she'd look all right in a suit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So she's the uh, the the teamed up bounty hunter trying to hunt down ET. Yeah, they're trying something different now. Yeah. They're giving him a female partner. Mm. That's a good elevator you know, pitch. She's new. She's innovative. innovative. She's awkward. Yeah, <laughs> and, and you know, you know, at some point she's going to fire a laser gun and it's going to rebound off something and like <laughs> singe her hair. <laughs> yeah, singe her hair. Yeah, <laughs> and she'll look like she'll try to cover it up with some awkward dance. <laughs> <laughs> Classic Faye. I love Tina Faye. Just I talking like, about her makes me realise like yeah, how much I want to see her in more stuff. Smile on the inside. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's just brilliant. I'd watch that movie. Awesome. You know, there was actually going to be a sequel to Gladiator, even though he died at the end. He went to, like, Hades, because Christ was growing in popularity around this time. Christ's power was killing all the Roman and Greek gods. Um, Maximus was going to come back to kill Christ. That was actually a sequel to Gladiator that was written. Russell Crowe in it. Yeah. Russell Crowe wanted them to make a sequel. He actually, one of his friends, I can't remember who it was, um, he actually approached him and said, I want you to write this sequel. And his friend's like, you're dead. Like, how can we do that? And he's like, yeah, work it out. Work it out. And that's what they he's came like, up I with. I need money. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, bro. I want to play Maximus again. He was like Being a really creative. cool guy. Hey, you guys want to wrap this up? Hey, you guys want to wrap it up? Let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. Let's do this. So this has been another episode of Haircut and the Beard. I'd like to thank our very special guest, the girl, for joining us. No problem, mate. <laughs> no probs. And of course, I'd like to thank my co host, Rob the Beard, the Texas Ranger Brown. Thank you very much. No worries. My name is Vader, aka Haircut. This is Haircut and the Beard. Hit us up on Twitter at HaircutBeard or uh, so a five star rating on iTunes. It really helps us get our name out there. Thanks so much for joining us. See you guys. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.